Biology. While incredibly integral to the human story, there's something more important that set us apart from everything that came before. Biology put us at the mercies of nature, unable to control our own destinies. We were so dependent on the ebb and flow of our natural limitations. Therefore, the true starting point for humankind is the point where our ancestors began to rise above nature, harnessing it to achieve our goals in ways that outclass the rest of the world's inhabitants. This is the moment we embarked on our path to today. Humankind is the direct descendant of Homo erectus. The lives they lived were encoded in us. Their long experience allowed us to build upon impressive basics and push them quickly to unimaginable heights. Humans are not particularly fast, nor are they strong. The strength of humanity lies in its cooperation and ingenuity. By utilizing these abilities, Erectus was able to create stone tools much more sophisticated than what Habilis made, using them to take down elephants and transforming us from scavenger to hunter. A hunter is much more complicated than a scavenger, and so we became more reliant on those who came before us to plan out and lead our hunting expeditions. Meat of the animal gave us a larger calorie dense boost which could have aided in the development of larger brains. Once our brains were bigger, we depended on this increase from meat to survive, but it also unlocked further advantages. Almost nothing is more powerful than the fury of fire, and having control over it propels that species to dominance. There are few things in our modern world that could have been accomplished without the use of fire somewhere along the line. The amount of burned material in and around Erectus archaeological sites began to appear 1.5 million years ago, but it did not really take off until somewhere around 500,000 years ago. Here we begin to see the improvement and finally evidence of continual use, which means they were able to create fires without chance events from nature and we're able to keep the flame alive for longer periods of time. Cooking also unlocked more calories from the food we ate, aiding further development of our bodies. There was less time and effort spent on digesting food. There was less time eating because we became fuller faster. And to this effect, we spent less time gathering and hunting so we could redirect our attention elsewhere. Most animals base their waking hours on daylight. They wake up at dawn and sleep just after dusk. With fire, humans could be awake for far longer, extending their day and allowing for the development of further social interactions and possibly even the kickstart to the birth of language. The improved interconnectedness of the brain probably allowed for the mental capacity to form words and simple sentence structures by this time. Language strengthens the coordination of tribes, allowing for sophisticated plans that stretch over grand periods of time. Additionally, this cultivation around the fire made the home central to Erectus culture, and ultimately, our culture, by giving us a safe place to mate and perhaps even begin to divide work by gender where the men hunt and the women cook. There was little chance for refrigeration back in the heartlands of Africa, and so food spoiled quickly. Particularly when they hunted elephants, they often could not consume the whole of the animal. There would be many leftovers, and instead of leaving it for opportunistic scavengers, Erectus dried the remains so they could prepare for periods of food scarcity as life was often unpredictable. This also increases the chances of survival for the group, because it allows for a more sustainable diet. In combination with the control of fire, allowing them to keep warm outside the tropics, 
could have eventually led them to become the first in our lineage to leave our birthplace in Africa and travel deep into Eurasia. Homo erectus did not stop there. They have been found as far as Sundalan, a now submerged continent connecting Southeast Asia and Indonesia. There have even been remains found on Indonesian islands never connected to Sundalan. This means that Homo erectus were the first seafaring hominids with successful island colonization reaching as far back as 800,000 years ago. Building an ocean vessel is an enormous task which involves a complex planning and communication possibly over multiple months in duration. This shows evidence of serious long-term planning, and if not verbal communication, then at least strong and previously established social coordination. With all great sagas, we have reached the end. Homo erectus is no longer wandering the earth, but they are with us. They gave us life. They brought forth fundamental control of the elements and pushed past the biological limitations. Homo erectus faced extinction with changing climates, with cold and desertification affecting most regions they roam, wiping them from existence in all but the homeland of Africa. We are resilient creatures, and so were our ancestors, because the best of Erectus evolved into many offshoots, including Homo Neanderthalis, Homo Denisova, Homo Florensiensis, and Homo Sapiens. This is Ancestoria, the history of our ancestors.